Jerry Moore. Jerry Moore. All right, what's going on, my people? And welcome to the SN95 Power Channel. It is almost car show season. And the first big car show of the year is um, normally Ponies in the Smokies for us who are trapped here in the Rust Belt. So um, for me, Ponies in the Smokies is one of my favorite um, car show events of the year. It's in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee or Sherriverville, Tennessee. It's a very great venue. It's something that lasts almost um, five days. And pretty much every day of the week, there's something to do down there. But for me, the, the great thing about Ponies in the Smokies, it really allows you to get out and enjoy the rest of the Mustang community with fellow enthusiasts. Some car shows you're kind of confined to just like a one location. So if the car show is at um, a parking lot at location A, once that's over with, then there's pretty much nothing else to do. The good thing about uh, Pigeon Forest, Tennessee, is there's, gosh, a lot of things that you can do with your fellow enthusiasts. Outside of just um, cruising the boulevard down there at Pigeon Forest, you have the Tail of the Dragon, um, the Shrine Run, you have the racetrack. There's a lot of things to do. And you, of course, you'll have like your little small local meetups during the um, car show week. So. To me, that's what makes Ponies in the Smokies like one of these must attend events. It's not just the car show itself, it's everything that you can do surrounding the car show with fellow enthusiasts. Now saying all that, this car is not ready for the show in 56 days, I believe now. And I just wanna run through some of the things I'm gonna start working on this car to get it ready for the show. Now, going back to last season, I really didn't have overheating problems with the car, but I was having this puddle, this cooling puddle on the top of the timing cover. And that was the original timing cover from 1995 on that car. And, you know, just with age and, you know, um, other chemicals or whatever the alchemy that causes this to happen, your timing cover will um, not seal as good as it was when it's brand new. So sometimes um, just freshening up the gaskets will work. Sometimes some um, ultra copper will work. Sometimes you just have to replace the, the timing cover. And that's where I'm at with this timing cover. Um, I tried just about every trick I, I could try to get that timing cover to seal. And I would still get this little puddle on top of the kind of time and cover of coolant. Like I said, it wasn't a big big deal with um, regulating temperature, but you know, if you go to the racetrack, and just from a safety standpoint, um, antifreeze is um, slicker than oil, so you definitely don't want to run over a puddle of antifreeze. So let's talk about the first thing I gotta do to this car. So this is a brand new time and cover that I ordered that we're gonna get installed on the car, but before I install it, I'm going to use some um, um, epoxy pour 15 to paint this. I'm actually going to get rid of the polished look on um, the car this year. It's just a lot of uptake, uh, upkeep to keep that intake manifold clean. We're just going to black out everything in that engine bay and kind of go with that um, red and black contrast look in the engine bay. Speaking of that, there's something else I'm going to install to help that red and black contrast. So my man, um, Greg, put me up on this. These are um, caster camber plate um, covers that you put on underneath your caster camber plate and it just helps protect the paint job when you make an adjustment to your caster camber plate. The thing I like about it is just the color contrast. So I've got this from Maker's Garage and you know, basically, you, before you put on your Casper camera plates, you just set this down and you put your Casper camera plates over it. I think it's a real nice look. And you know, with the, the black finish on this is going to help um, bring out that 
red and black contrast in the engine bay. So, uh, last year I did the um, fuel pump on this car. I um, installed the Aeromotive uh, fuel pump hanger, which is a great piece. And before I did that, I was smelling a little um, uh, fuel from underneath the car. And I actually thought it was like one of the gasket seals on the fuel tank. Come to find out, I have a pinhole leak on my fuel system. And um, luckily for me, I have a uh, electronic cutoff that I normally keeps op I keep open a lot when I drive that car. And I say I'm fortunate because the leak was right above the muffler. So the fuel was dripping on the muffler. Now, if I didn't have that um, cutout valve open, you know, who knows what would happen with all the heat that that muffler would um, generate. So I have PTFE lines this year. Those lines that are on there, I've had on there for like five years. Those are vibrant. Um, they're just braided steel lines, which were supposed to be quote E85 compatible. They are E85 compatible, but for how long are they E85 compatible is the question. So we're just going with uh, PTFE lines and we're doing so you have to use PTFE fittings. I've always sucked at trying to put these PTFE fittings on the car, but I bought a little tool, um, tool to assist me in doing that. Worked out pretty great. You've probably seen these things online, but basically uh, you stick these in the vise and they just um, clamp on the your holes or your PTFE fittings and it keeps everything nice and stable. So I did test it out and I did put um, one fitting on. This is a dash eight and a dash six I have. So we'll have to um, get this installed. Another thing is my transmission. Now I did upgrade to a monster transmission cooler, which is tucked right behind the bumper. And there's virtually no airflow where it's mounted right now. So you gotta have some cooling fans. Now, um, Dural, they sell that monster cooler with the option of a dual fan setup or no fan setup. I call myself trying to um, cheat the system and just go with a single fan. And I didn't really have a lot of cooling problems with the transmission temperature, but I didn't take the car to the track last year. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install this second fan on that cooler and run it the way that the um, manufacturer has it for a dual fan setup. So my Ultimate SN95 build video, I talked about um, putting a car stereo in this car. I have the five by eights in there right now um, in the door and in the rear deck, but I don't have anything as far as a um, processor or amplifier. So. I talked about a Bluetooth amp, and I think um, in the video I had showed a Sony Bluetooth amp. This is a, um, what company is this, Lanzar? Like I, I know like they're bought out by PAL now, but back in the day, I, I used to rock some Lanzar amps and had um, pretty good success with them. So. This is a budget amp and I figure I'll give it a try. And um, if I like it, then we'll rock with it. If I don't like it, then I just might go back to the traditional um, head unit amplifier setup. But with this um, Bluetooth setup, this will allow me to just use my cell phone as my head unit. And I don't have to worry about um, running or wiring up a head unit or I can use that space up front for something else. So along with the um, amplifier, I do have a uh, subwoofer enclosure. It's over here, I'm not gonna show it right now because that's probably gonna be the next video that I'm going to do is the audio installation for this car. So if you wanna see the subwoofer setup for this um, Mustang, and it's a 12 inch, uh, 12 inch, no, it's a 10 inch subwoofer sealed enclosure and a lot of good reviews from it. So if you're interested in that stuff, hang around, hit the bell notification, subscribe to the channel because this enclosure is going to leave a lot of room if you use your trunk in your S95. 
it will give you a lot of um, trunk space, more a lot of usable trunk space still. So I'm very excited about um, testing this enclosure out as far as fitment and sound quality. So we got that video coming up next after this one. So that's it for the things I need to do for as far as installs that I need to do for this car for Ponies in the Smoky. I still have to um, go get the hood, put the hood on this car. I still gotta do some um, paint correction. The weather stripping is in good condition on this car. I, I kind of checked it over. I thought it was in worse con condition than it actually was, but there's still a couple little odds and end things I need to um, buy for um, this car to be ready for the car show season. But, you know, those parts and just some paint correction is pretty much all that I have to do. I did have a scare. I have to um, tell you all this, this story. Uh, on my birthday, uh, Kim and I, we went out, I think that was a Thursday, and um, shout out, man, gosh, I love this community. Shout out, I can't think of my man name, but I was at the, the rink, the skating rink in, the, in um, Chicago, and I ran into a uh, supporter of the channel, and I've, I've seen him before at the skating rink. My man is doing them three turns, killing it. He's got the crazy legs going and going at the skating rink, killing it. And um, ran into him and just started chatting. He was like, yeah, you know, um, I um, support the channel and he's got a, um, a roller, SN95 right now. You know, we're kind of just talking about it. And um, if you're watching this, make sure you um, hit me up, bro, because I uh, definitely want to work with you on um, getting that car back rolling so we can um, have a little fun this year. But so I uh, went out that day and um, came back home was feeling like crap. Uh, that was the start of the um, the little blizzard that we had in the Midwest, the first one. And um, went to sleep, was, was feeling like crap, and um, got up the next morning. The snow wasn't in the forecast until later that day. Went to work, came back home. Actually worked half a day because I was sick. And on my way back home was when the snow had started. So I um, pulled the car, in the house, went upstairs and just took some third flu and was out of it. Now that was Saturday. Sunday morning comes around and my neighbor knocks on my door and he's like, your garage door has been open <laughs> this whole time. So I was so out of it that I had left the garage door open for, you know, 30 hours or however long it was. And when it dawned on me, I was just like, oh crap, I hope I got enough um, antifreeze mixture in this car. So. I don't crack the block. I've, I've known people who've done that before who, you know, guys who run their cars at the track, you know, they don't like, some tracks don't like for you to have any antifreeze, you have to run straight water. Life happens, forget to empty that water out of their uh, motor for um, the off season. Cold spill comes around, their block freezes, it cracks and they're done. And so that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Like, oh crap, man. I. I know I was kind of playing around with the antifreeze mixture. I was adding some of that um, uh, be cool or keep cool. So I didn't know how much um, antifreeze mixture I had in the car. Lo and behold, when I finally feel good enough to um, come out here and kind of inspect the car, I open up the radiator cap, open up the reservoir cap. The reservoir cap, and you look down there, the coolant is frozen. Stick my finger in the radiator. I have a little liquid, but then the further you put your finger down, it's like slushy. I'm like, crap. So I go grab the lower radiator hose. The radiator hose is not frozen solid, but it's like a slushy feeling. So at that point, I'm just like, well, there's nothing I can do. I just gotta, you know, turn on the torpedo, heat up the garage, see what happens. So finally get everything up to temperature. The um, coolant has um, thawed out in the radiator. The lower radiator hose isn't slushy anymore. I haven't seen any coolant on the ground. It's still holding the same amount of coolant. So I think I might've gotten lucky, but honestly, I really won't know 100% if there's any damage done until I almost really start the car up. So we're gonna get the car in the air. I have to drain the coolant anyway when I install this um, time and cover, but I, I think I'm in the cool. Like I think if 
everything was frozen solid, then I would have an issue about the block cracking. But being that things was kind of just like a, a slushy kind of feel, I think it's fine. Like I say, um, got sick, life happens, bonehead move. So if you're in a situation where, you know, you um, have to run more water than antifreeze when the water come around, just make sure you dump all that coolant out of your block. Yeah, so um, Ponies in the Smoky, March 20th. That's when we'll be down there. I hope to see y'all down there. Um, I know one last a couple of years ago, we did the um, Iron Asphalt Customs S95 Power um, meet down there. That was a huge success. Um, haven't really talked to John about that this year. I doubt that anything like that happens this year. But, you know, if anything pops up as far as the meet, I'll be sure to let everybody know. Looking forward to um, hanging out with some of you and meeting you down there. So drop a comment down below if you're going to go and um, hang out at Ponies in the Smokies. I, I definitely recommend this as far as your car show circuit if you can make it. So that's the end of this video. I appreciate y'all rocking with me on this. And until next time, God bless.